Today, I'm showing you how to become a way better controller player fast in the new Fortnite chapter. For any of these tips to work, though, you have to be subscribed. Now, let's hit the first tip, which is the best controller settings for this chapter. Basically, if you had settings that you were really good on last chapter, you shouldn't change them at all. The best aiming, the best editing, the best mechanics in general come from staying on the same settings. So either stick with the settings that you were good on last chapter, or I'll quickly run through the ones that I typically use. These are the same settings that I've been using for a while now, and I used them last chapter, and they still work perfectly this chapter. So if you don't know of any other good settings, then those are a good base starting point for you. We're not done with the settings yet, though. Tip 2 is over in the game UI setting. Basically, another YouTuber, Upshaw, discovered that in this chapter, controller aim assist can just turn off. This is apparently an issue with the new reticle and damage feedback setting. So to fix this, these are the settings that you're going to want to use. Reticle, of course, is on. You kind of need that. Reticle ammo indicator is off. Damage numbers is on list. Reticle damage feedback is on off. And target type indicator is on off. So now you shouldn't have any issues with aim assist. The next tip is a quick one, and it's where you should bind your reality augments to. Us controller players are literally running out of buttons, but we do still have a couple that don't have major gameplay connections. I personally just switch out my emote bind for the augment select, but having absolutely no emote button is boring. Sometimes you want to take the L on somebody. So I actually went into my build binds, and I put emote on the same button that I have reality augment on, except it's just in builds now. When I have an augment ready, I can select my augment super easily, and even if I'm in builds or edits, if an augment is ready and I click down on D-pad, that overpowers the emote button, so it's always gonna go to augment. But if there's no augment available, all I have to do is press my switch mode, and then I can click my emote button, and I can still emote. It's sort of an annoying workaround, but I guess that's just what we're gonna have to do on controller. If you're dead set on not removing your emote from your combat controller, what you could do is replace your place marker with the augment select, and then keep your emote. But I find that, especially if you're playing any sort of team game mode, having a marker is pretty important. So you'll have to make that decision for yourself, but me personally, I'm just gonna stick with the build mode thing, and this is perfectly fine for me. Speaking of augments, tip 4 is which ones us controller players should be using. This one's kinda hard because you get 4 augment selections a game, and every single selection, there's a different two to pick between. There's a few that are obvious takes every single time. Like, you always wanna take glider redeploy, storm mark, forecast, those ones are super overpowered. But for the more common ones, I basically stay away from all the bow, rifle, and pistol ones because I never have those weapons in my loadout. I also hate the soaring sprints one because it's just way too loud. The light fingers, which reloads SMGs faster, is super good for us controller players because we can spray a ton. Basically, all the rest, it depends on what situation you're in in-game. Now, I just mentioned that I don't use a few specific augments because I never have those specific weapons in my loadout. So, tip 5 is about what controller player's loadout should look like this chapter. My optimal loadout, meaning what I carry every game if it's available, is two guns, one mobility item, and two heals. This is also the loadout I see most other good players run. The two guns being first, always the thunder shotgun. It's slow and a little clunky, but it's super high damage hitting, so as long as you have decent aim, that's the shotgun you should run. And the second gun for me is always the twin mag SMG. This is definitely the best SMG in the game as it burns through builds and players' health. I mean, even if you miss a shotgun shot, this thing comes in clutch as a backup. And I say two guns because the ARs this chapter suck. The red eye AR shoots way too slow for it to be worth it. And the scars bloom is awful. Like, if you're playing against decent players, with either of the two ARs, you might hit one shot before they start building anyway. So you deal 30, maybe up to like 70 damage for a headshot before they start building. And I just don't think that's worth it to take up an entire slot. At the end of chapter 3, there was a ton of mobility with the balloons all around the map. There was so much stuff that you didn't really need to carry a mobility item. Chapter 4's map basically has no mobility on it. But what I think they added to combat that is the shockwave hammer, which is something I carry every single game in my mobility slot. It's insanely overpowered right now as it allows you to move around the map super quick. It also allows you to instantly get into close range fight, which is what you need to do if you only have a shotgun and SMG. And to that point, not only does it allow you to get in those close range fights really quickly, it also allows you to escape them very easily. So that leaves two slots left, and I typically use both those for heals. Or sometimes if I can't find two heals, I'll just carry one heal, and the last slot can be completely random. A lot of times I like to mess around with the Excalibur rifle, or it can be literally any other item. So at this point in the chapter, the ultimate sweat loadout is the Thunder Shotgun, the Twin Mag SMG, the Shockwave Hammer, and then two heals. I mean, with that loadout, it's going to be hard for other players to stop you. To even get that loadout, though, you have to survive early game. So tip six is on the best drop spots for this chapter. Now, it's always good to spend some time dropping at every single spot, because through that, you'll find your favorite. And after I spent my time doing that, here are my favorites. First, the big house that's like west of Frenzy has some solid loot, plus good mats, is rarely contested, and is a good spot on the map. Another spot I really like, which is usually contested by at least one other player, is the three houses down east of Slappy. 
from these two spots, you might notice I hate fighting early games, so that's why my favorite spots are super low key. But if you did want to spice it up a little, Breakwater Bay is a super solid spot to drop 10 plus elim game. Right off drop, you'll be slightly contested, but all the main POIs are over there, so once you loot and start rotating, there's tons of players to fight. If none of these spots interest you though, I'd suggest looking at the website Fortnite.gg to find some underrated spots with tons of loot and good attributes. This website basically is an overview of the entire map. It allows you to zoom in, zoom out, and see basically everything that's in the game. And now the seventh and final tip comes straight from the number one arena player in the world right now. This guy SR3 has well over 30,000 points already just a few days into the new season. And when I asked him for a tip on fighting and winning games this chapter, he said that specifically this chapter, fighting with peace control and angles is super important. He said that with the proper angles, it's easy to not even take a single hit of damage during fight, which I mean, that's pretty crazy. So maybe you should get into creative and grind your peace control a little bit to be successful this chapter. So that's six quick tips plus an honorary tip from the number one arena grind all in six minutes. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe. Help me beat the race to 100,000 before this year ends. And I hope to catch you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.